had the uh, pleasure of seeing the new movie, and it is surefire. You did a great job. Oh, thank you so much. It was super fun. Where did the idea, I know um, Brian came up with this screenplay, but what made you really decide to jump on and be the director of this film? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think Brian wrote an incredibly fun and entertaining screenplay that also had, like, something to say, mm -hmm. right? And um, actually was about something that kind of affects people's lives, but it was you know, it was as enjoyable as an ice cream sundae and there was just some hidden broccoli in there. And um, <laughs> and uh, what I loved about it when I first read it was I just laughed out loud, but then, you know, I just thought it was funny. I kind of was cracking up. And then afterwards, I was like, I cannot believe that that stuff actually happened, you know? And that was kind of like hysteria. I had the same experience where, um, I, you know, there's this kind of, First, just this enjoyment and entertainment uh, value, and then after you have that experience, you, you kind of feel like you learned something, but not in a way that felt like school. And then I found out Zoe was attached with the producer and was the lead, and I kind of said, like, please, 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 please let me direct it, because I just knew she was going to be amazing and knock it out of the park. Did you have to do much uh, campaigning to get it, or once you met kind of with Zoe and the rest of the team, did they say, yes, you were the one for this? Um, yeah, I mean, I knew that when they were, they were meeting with, uh, they were meeting with a few different directors, but I think it was a small handful. I had met the producers, the other producers on a couple of other projects and, um, had really good meetings and they were looking for one day the right match. So when they were interviewing directors, I think they, you know, probably had it done with a small group, but mm -hmm. you never really know when you're in like a for hire situation because you know oftentimes you'll develop a movie right with the writer or with the mm -hmm. material and so you know you're going to get it <laughs> and then it's just trying to get all the money <laughs> in this case you know they had had Zoe the script and some of the money already mm -hmm. which is a fantastic way if you get it to get on board exactly. <laughs> if you really can focus on you know your actual job um, and so I don't know I mean there's a pretty standard, I there's a pretty normal process which involves kind of interviewing, talking about your thoughts and your vision for the film, and you kind of have, you know, a series of those meetings with producers and then with, you know, actors, or, and in this case, actor producer, um, sometimes the finances, and, and, uh, and I was, you know, I had one meeting with the producers and then with Brian. And who's a writer, but also producer, and then with Larry. And so there's a process more than a campaign, but then when you start to fall in love with something, you start calling all your friends and Hollywood going, call up Spencer and call up and tell them how great I am, please, please. <laughs> so, you know, you get invested. But, you know, you don't tend to know till late in the game if there's, like, a lot of competition, you know, who you're considering. You might also be you then are trying to figure out how you can get them hired on to something else. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, in, it, you know, from my point of view, I was very enthusiastic and it was a really um, thorough but not overly expensive process. But I, I didn't know beyond that like, how much of a war I was in, which is nice because you just talk about what you love about it and the job you'll do and help they pick you and it worked out for me. And, um, and it was really fun and then it, you know, I've had projects where I've been on, you know, from development till we finally got it done in seven years or something. And oh it was kind of cool. This is the first time we're like, and that's pretty normal. If you're starting from a zero from an idea, mm -hmm. then you have to get the script written, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to when it's released. Seven, five to seven years is the normal time horizon for an independent film, which is crazy. Um, there's this one I was a year ago, in October of 2018, like I read it. I was on by January, and we shot it, or, you know, we went the prep by May. So, like, like, it all happened inside of a year or something, and that was much more, you know, it felt more yeah. efficient, but also it was really cool. And it kind of, the personality of the movie was like that, right? It like, was. once it gets going, it just goes. 
Well, and I think that's what <laughs> I loved so much about it was not only did you make it fast paced, but Zoe's character, Peggy, is extremely fast in everything she does, from the way how fast she thinks to how fast she talks. Yes. Um, how much of that was her and how much of it, that was you, kind of the two of you collaborating on this character to be like, I'm going to make it just as fast as how you're talking and make it, I mean, it really paid off in the end. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I think it's been, it was inherent to the writing, mm-hmm. like, a, you know, a script like that has to be good on the page, and that kind of rapid-fire dialogue, like, has to be well-written. It doesn't mean it doesn't change, but it just has to fundamentally be there, so I give a lot of props to Brian, and then when I read it, I saw those great screwball comedies that kind of, like, Catherine Hepburn, Carrie Grant, you know, mm-hmm. you know, or, like, that kind of Sun Like It Hot, and Billy Wilder kind of movies, and... So I already knew that was the vibe, and then, you know, getting to meet Zoe, like, her brain goes that fast, she talks that fast, um, and so then, like, as a filmmaker, I just thought, you know, Zoe's character's in every scene, I think, except for maybe one or something, mm-hmm. yeah. she's in every single scene, and so I, I just knew the filmmaker, that our camera style, our filming style, had to take you, stick with wherever Peg was emotionally, mm-hmm. so when, we're, when she's going fast, you know, we're in steady cam, or we're handheld, or we're gliding along, and we're going, we're moving all the time, mm-hmm. but when she's in a more emotional, you know, she doesn't, she has a quiet moment, yeah. you know, when she's absorbing something, and then we're, qu- we're quiet, and we're, maybe we're creeping in slowly, maybe we're still, mm-hmm. um, and I just thought, if we stick with Peg and Zoe, we're going to win, mm-hmm. that was basically my thought, so that's what I did. Well, it paid off, as I said. Um, because of how fast-paced it is, did you guys have to do multiple takes just from, like, flubbing, or did, was it kind of just smooth sailing the entire time? Um, I mean, I think any creative process, smooth sailing is a really interesting concept <laughs> and probably not applicable. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> because you're discovering stuff. So you don't... This idea that you... We do all the planning, but not because we know what we're going to get. It's so that we can create a world where we can discover. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's when you want more, to- more time for discovery. What's a great with Zoe um, is, you know, I tease her that she's a seven-take wonder, but not because she can't do it in one take. She almost always knocks it out of the park in every take. Mm-hmm. It's that she gives the director, she's very generous, because some, act- some actors really like to do the performance in a very specific direction. Mm-hmm. And if that isn't working in the editing room, you kind of stuck with it. Mm-hmm. And Zoe is the opposite. She's incredibly generous. Uh, she always wants a few, one more. She goes, give me one more. Give me one more. <laughs> but it isn't like, I think, a lack of confidence is that, you know, I remember she walked over after one, you know, one scene we were shooting and she goes, okay, great. Now you got a fast one, you got a slow one, you got a funny one, you got a serious one. And she gives you the crayons to have in the crayon box, mm-hmm. right? You, you really get, gives you choices, and they're still all part of that same character. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't explain it, but it's not that she doesn't know what she's doing. She knows. She goes, I want to try one this way. I want to try where she's really intense about this, and one where she's making fun of it more. But she's willing to really discover every thing that character has to offer and then give it to you as a director. Mm-hmm. But later when you're putting it together, you can, you know, you can really fine tune the performance is there. I mean, you just get the opportunity to fine tune it in a way mm-hmm. um, that is. It's an incredibly generous thing as a creative collaborator and as a director. It's a great experience because you don't know, certainly when you're like like a, a very uh, intense time like uh, time frame on a on a shorter shoot like that, mm-hmm. you normally don't get that, um, and it will push. It pushes the limits of what you're trying to do sometimes, but I've got to tell you, like, you don't get a performance like that, uh, you know, without a really brilliant and generous actress like yeah. that. Yeah, was it always um, written in the script for there to be the fourth breaking of the fourth wall, or was that a decision that was made while filming? Always written in. I really, I didn't think when it first happened that I would enjoy it, but the f- more hey, I saw... Let me let me re-answer that. Let me answer that. I think it was written. <laughs> there was always voiceover, but I don't know 
I have to go back and look. I don't know if I just assumed she was doing it on camera instead of voiceover. Because there's obviously voiceover. Yeah, yeah. But the time where she actually literally breaks the fourth wall, I'm like, I think it was always written in, but I could be completely wrong. I could have just always decided that. You know, sometimes as a director, you so clearly see something in your brain yeah. that you start talking about it like it's true, and then your, your crew looks at you with their heads tilted and goes, uh-huh. Where did it say that? You're like, oh, yeah, 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 we're doing that. <laughs> so, it makes I, sense. I it, all it, it was always written in. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's what I, I was saying. It was like, at first, when it <laughs> panned out, I was like, mm, because normally when films do that, they can kind of distract from what actually is going on. And I thought it worked really well for this one. So, if it was your idea, kudos to you. <laughs> I, I give Brad, Brian most of the credit, but, you know, I also am like, I want her. Because yeah. um, I think Brian just knew this world. He grew up in yes. Buffalo. He knew this story. Um, but I think, you know, Zoe was always game for it. I, I, was, I just felt like she is so in charge. And she is a woman telling her own story, good, bad, indifferent, you know, and she's going to own the whole thing. And I just wanted to never hear from that yeah yeah and it, it, it comes off so well in the film um one of the other things i noticed is obviously it's supposed to take pa place in buffalo but there's no snow was that a choice made by you it's, it's the end of it's the, it's the end right it's the like it's, i think it's the beginning of football season yeah i mean the truth is that in you know this world of filmmaking, when you get an actor's availability yeah. and the money all happening at the same time, you shoot it whenever. Yeah. So, there's definitely a snowy version of this movie um, <laughs> that was discussed. Mm -hmm. And, it, but truthfully, we, when we could shoot it was in the summer, and we just kind of went, eh, it's fine, like there's so much buffalo in this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, separate from the snow, you know what I mean? But we just thought, it isn't a movie about snow, it's a movie about debt collection and this kind of young, um, like, blood in your teeth entrepreneurial mm -hmm. hustler. And we just thought, like, let's just go for it. And so, I'm sure we are really glad in the end, trying to make, like, a, <laughs> like a, a movie on not, on a lot, not a lot of money in the yeah. snow. I've done. I made a movie for, like, a million, a lot less money. Um, in the snow, and it was not the best. I mean, the movie was good, but it was not the most fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. Well, how much research did you have to do in just the whole grand schemes from the, you know, the debt collection to her starting one in the business to the location? How much involvement did you have research-wise? Yeah, so we did, Brian did a shit ton of research, mm -hmm. um, and in writing it, and, you know, he grew up in Buffalo, but he learned all about the debt collection business, and then I think the Buffalonian, um, like, you know, details and stuff he knew from just growing up there, which was great. Um, and then Zoe did a lot of personal research, and then Brian educated me, and then I did a lot. I watched some documentaries on debt collection, I did a lot of, like, I went down to Buffalo, and, you know, ate seriously, like, too many names. Um, which was very important mm -hmm. uh, for the film. Um, and I'm not going to get involved in the whole, you know, where's your favorite wing place, <laughs> you know, debate, because it's just, I think I better not go there. I like all Buffalo Wings yes. from Buffalo. Brian, who is a native son, does not like any. Um, so, yeah, we did a ton of research, and then you have to kind of do it all, make sure it's valid, and then you have to forget it because people aren't living their lives in research. And mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a fun, entertaining ride. Um, and so I, I, you kind of soak yourself in it and then kind of hand that off to someone else to, to check you mm -hmm. while you go forward and tell, like, a fun story about, like, this crazy character. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, and we were pretty thorough, and then we kind of just, like, then let the characters be people that are entertaining and funny and, you know, have really weird dilemmas. <laughs> well, it was great. Thank you so much for speaking with me today.